Okay, so Prisma 3D, a 3D animation software for Android phones in which you can literally create anything if you have enough time and patience. This is a full-fledged video about Prisma 3D in which you learn how to operate every single tool in this software. So let's jump into the video. So, the first step is navigation, to which you'll learn how to navigate this software. On the home screen, there are three options, one for starting a new project, one for importing a 3D model, and one for opening a recently saved file. Okay, let's start a new project. This is a basic user interface for new users. On the top left corner of the screen, there is a cube icon, to which you can add a couple of presets like a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, a camera and a light source. After adding the cube, three arrows for moving the cube in X, Y and Z direction will appear. In order to move the cube, you need to touch an arrow and start dragging it along the screen. Same thing is for rotation, just touch and drag and this will rotate the cube. The last option is scaling which basically changes the size of your cube. Just touch and drag these arrows. On the bottom left corner of the screen, there are 5 options, one for selecting the whole 3D model which by default is selected, one for selecting faces, one for selecting edges, one for vertices, and fifth option is for rigging a 3D model. On the top right corner of the screen, there are 3 options, one for undoing your last step, one for redoing your last step, and one opens up a small menu in which you can save, export, or import your project. The second step is modeling to which you learn how to model something like a character, a chair or anything that is on your mind. For example, let's make a simple character from this cube. Go into face select mode, select the bottom face and click on the extrusion button. Use the bottom arrow to extrude a new shape. Now select the knife tool and cut the cube into two equal parts. Then select a face, use the extrusion button to extrude a new shape and scale it down. So it looks like a character's leg. Do the same thing for the second face and now now you have a character with a head, body and a pair of legs. Now select the knife tool and cut the cube in the middle and extrude his right and left arm. Congratulations, you have made your first 3D character but unfortunately we can't move this character cause it doesn't have any bones in it. So the fifth option comes and saves the day. Select the option and click on the middle of the body of this character to add a bone. Then click on the middle of his head to add a bone into his skull. Again select the middle bone and click on the left arm to add a bone into his left arm. Click on the back bone again and add a bone into his right arm. Do the same for both of these legs. Now click on this option for printing the bones into the character and wait for a while. Now our character is perfectly rigged. If we select a bone, go into rotation mode, we can easily rotate his arms, the head, the legs and the body. Now you have to practice this for a whole day to become a professional at modeling. Or if you are too lazy at modeling, just click on the input button, add in an OBJ file that you can download from Google. The third step is coloring and texturing, to which you can change the color of the cube. You can add textures, which by the way is a process of applying a flight image to a 3D model. Click on the texture button and from there you can select a JPEG image that will be automatically applied on your 3D model. You can also add shine to the 3D model by messing up with these numbers. The next step is animating through which you learn how to add movements to your scene. Click on the animation button to move into animation tab. On the bottom of your screen, there is a timeline from where you can add keyframes to your 3D model. No need to go too deep into frames per second stuff. Just think that 30 frames is equal to a single second, 60 frames is equal to 2 seconds, 90 frames is equal to 3 seconds, and so on, so on, so on. Now, if you go to frame number 0 and select the cube, a clock icon will appear on the bottom right corner of the screen. By tapping on the clock, a keyframe is added at frame number 0. Now, what does it mean? Well, no matter what happens, at frame number 0, the cube will be in this position. Now, let's go to frame number 30 and move the cube from point A to point B. Then click on the clock icon to add a keyframe. Now no matter what happens at frame number 30, the cube will be in this position. Now if we hit play, the cube will start moving from point A to point B. Great job! This is how we add moments to our scenes. Ok, let's delete the keyframe number 30 by tapping on the clock. Then rotate the cube and add another keyframe using the clock. Now if we hit play, the cube will start rotating cause we just added a rotation keyframe. Now animating is the most important step in any 3D software out there. If you put your heart and soul into animating, 
to end up with something that no one has ever made before. The next step is lighting, to which you can add fake lights to your 3D scene to make it look like more epic, more cinematic. There are three types of lights in Prisma 3D. One point light that lights up everything which is around it. Second, a sunlight which literally lights up everything in your 3D scene. And the third one is a spotlight which is basically a torch. You can change the color of the light on the left side of the screen. You can increase or decrease the intensity and range of the light by messing up with these numbers. The next step is camera operating which is one of the most important steps in 3D animation. Choose a specific angle of your scene then go into top left corner of the screen, click on the Q icon and then add a camera. Click on the camera and then click on the jump in button to see everything from the camera's perspective. You can change the pattern of your color, you can change the angle of the camera and you can also animate your camera to make it look more epic. Click on the camera, go to frame number 0 in the animation tab and then add a keyframe by tapping on the clock. Then go to frame number 40, zoom in or zoom out of the camera and then add another keyframe. Now if you hit play, camera will start moving from point A to point B. This is how you add movements to your camera. While animating patience is the key to success. The last step is rendering, to which you learn how to save your animation into a video. Go to three dots on the top right corner of the screen. There is an option for rendering which opens up a small menu. Set the frame rate to 30 and then find from where you want to start rendering your animation. Then find the end point of your animation. For example, if you made an animation from frame number 0 to frame number 50, add both of these numbers. In the first option, frame 0 and the second option, frame 50. Then hit render and wait for a while until your animation is rendered. Now, if you want to save this animation onto your gallery, just click on save to gallery. But sometimes it doesn't work. So follow these steps to find your animation video. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you still have any questions related to Pizza 3D, leave a comment down below. I'll answer your question. As always, thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.